This program is presented by the Prior Art Gallery on the campus of Columbia State Community College in Columbia, Tennessee, and is made possible by a grant from the Tennessee Arts Commission and through the support of the Columbia State Foundation. Hello, from my studio in Franklin, Tennessee. This is Rusty Somerville, curator of the Pryor Gallery at Columbia State Community College. Today, I'll be in Nashville, visiting various areas of town and talking with four artists who help bring a unique form of beauty to the city. We'll be discussing art from a perspective that is often overlooked. No, we won't be discussing the beautiful architecture of the city with modern glass structures reaching for the clouds. And we won't be talking about the steeples of grace or the spires of education that fill us with faith and knowledge. We won't even be discussing the diverse and growing number of people who add excitement and color to the city. Today we'll be speaking of an art form that is said to date from the cave paintings of prehistoric time. An art form that was present during the Roman Empire. In fact, it has been said that Brutus was influenced to participate in the assassination of Julius Caesar by the writings on the wall. And that was 44 BC. So yes, the art form we'll be discussing today is graffiti. It is widely believed that the modern graffiti movement was born in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in the mid-1960s. The creator of this modern-day movement was Daryl McRae, better known as Cornbread. Serving time in a detention center during his youth and wanting something more than the stale bread he was served in the mess hall, Daryl constantly pestered the cook for cornbread as it was the bread he remembered his grandmother baking. Pushed to his limits, the detention center cook finally got angry and physically threw Daryl out of the kitchen, yelling, keep cornbread out of my kitchen. Well, the name stuck, and Daryl has proudly referred to himself as cornbread ever since. When released from the detention center and trying to impress a girl, Daryl began tagging or signing every city wall and bus stop with his newfound name, Cornbread. Others soon began imitating his art and it quickly spread throughout Philadelphia and then to New York City. Soon, building walls, subways, and freight cars traveling the country were covered with the stylized tags of graffiti artists. In fact, if you'd like to see an art exhibit, one passes every railroad crossing in America, many times each day and night, and it's free. So hop on board the Graffiti Express and walk the city sidewalks with me as we explore the art of the streets. Today, as can be seen by all the spray paint cans on the shelf, I'm in the studio of Nashville graffiti artist, Troy Duff. It's good to see you, Troy. How you doing? My name is Troy Duff. Uh, I'm a Nashville native, Nashville-based graffiti artist. Um, born and raised in Nashville and uh, also lived in Los Angeles for about 15 years. But um, was introduced to graffiti art in high school uh, by a good friend of mine, and um, I've been just entertained, playing around with this art form since probably the late 80s. Um, after graduating high school, I moved to Los Angeles in 1991, and I feel like that's where my art really started to progress. Um, Graffiti art on the West Coast is much more welcome and people are a lot more used to it. So 
it's not as looked down on as it, as it was at the time in the South. It was welcomed, such an art form was welcomed, but where I was from at the time, this was looked at as pure vandalism. You know, you do have gang activity that was associated with it, so on, the, on another note, it was a little harder to paint on the West Coast. Still, it, it was a great time in the early 90s to be a part of such a graffiti movement uh, in Los Angeles. Since your days as a Los Angeles graffiti artist, how has the art progressed? Okay, and so right now, graffiti art is popular around the world. Um, it's a lot more accepting and there's a lot of festivals going on. Uh, there's Art Basel in Miami that goes on every year that started out as just really welcoming all kinds of mediums and platforms within art, but it seems to have just become <laughs> graffiti art Basel. When we chatted earlier, you said that you'd like to talk about the various types and styles of graffiti art. There's graffiti art, there's street art, um, people use like guerrilla marketing, there's all these different names for what people want to call spray can art, aerosol art. Graffiti to me and graffiti to someone else can be completely different meanings. Graffiti to me is a, is a text-based art form so it says something. Um, a lot of graffiti artists like to paint their name. Um, and so when you're looking at graffiti on trains or graffiti around different cities and you're trying to read it, uh, nine times out of 10, it, they're, they're painting their name. So it's text. And how do artists like Banksy fit into the graffiti world today? The whole Banksy thing has become more of the street art, um, if you will. It's a lot more stencil-based art. I consider myself a graffiti art. That's what I love. Um, that's what my passion is. I understand that you've worked with country music artist Keith Urban, creating a piece for his Graffiti You album. Was contacted by Pandora Media. Um, about doing a project with Keith, and it was basically listening to his new album and coming up with a word that I thought described, you know, just the energy of the songs I may be listening to. And I also understand that the word you chose to paint was electric. I was illustrating on this wall that word and, and, and graffiti, and, uh, at the end, Keith is going to come in and, and I'm going to reveal this piece to him and we're going to stand around and talk about, you know, my process from beginning to end of applying this piece and, you know, maybe how it um, coordinates with how he writes a song on up until he records it. Here for everyone to see is a photo of Keith standing in front of your electric graffiti and also a great photo of the piece by itself. Uh, it was a really cool project, and um, shortly after that, I received a call about doing Keith's guitar because he was going on tour. And so I basically used the same word and did a graffiti version of that on his guitar that he took on tour with him. And they made an emoji out of it. Um, that was a little Twitter emoji and uh, just really cool projects came of that whole thing. So not only did, uh, you know, they made a emoji, a Twitter emoji out of the guitar, I received this really cool gift of a Christmas, Christmas ornament and it's a graffiti version of the guitar, an ornament for the tree. Right, so how cool is that? Now, before we wrap up, let's talk about the legality of graffiti. Legality of, of graffiti art, um, it's illegal. Um, you know, every graffiti artist starts out by tagging his or her name. So graffiti artists are called writers, so they're writing their name, they're tagging their name. Uh, 
all over the city. You know, growing up in Nashville, we didn't have legal places to do graffiti. But when I moved to Los Angeles, there are places, legal places. Venice Beach, for one, the courtyards of Venice Beach. Uh, Atlanta has legal walls. A lot of places have legal walls. You say graffiti art, and it's very taboo because it has a negative connotation to it because people associate it with vandalism. But now it's welcomed a lot because people can appreciate that at the end of the day, it's still art. It's done with spray paint, but it's still art. I sure have enjoyed talking with you, Troy. But before we finish, why don't you tell us how folks can contact you? And as you do, I'll show several pieces of your wonderful graffiti that can be found around Nashville. One last thing, if you have not been down to the new National Museum of African American Music that's down at 5th and Broadway in downtown Nashville, I was commissioned to do five pieces for the hip hop gallery that are permanent. So please go check that out, really cool stuff. My contact information, uh, my website is troyduffart.com. Uh, my Instagram is at duffelmatic. If you need to contact me for commissions, uh, my email is troy at troyduffart.com. That's how you find me. Number one desirable I do what I want when I want and how I want it Leave you with the one in the air That's how I roll I got tons of soul on my true collective ball Famous, also famous, number one desirable Today we find ourselves walking the tracks, crossing the Cumberland River Bridge into East Nashville. Here, we'll meet a street artist who began painting graffiti in high school, but has progressed into a more representational art, now painting large-scale figurative pieces. Why don't I let him introduce himself and tell us about his life as a street or mural artist. My name's Eric. Uh, I go by Moby. That's my alias, if you will. I've uh, been painting pretty much my whole life. Started taking it seriously in high school in about the 10th grade, 2005. That's when I got introduced to graffiti. And I instantly was obsessed with it. Uh, pretty much could tell by my academics that that was not my focus anymore. Uh, I would check out graffiti books and and all my friends and I would sketch in our black books all the time and pass around our sketchbooks and draw and draw all the time. Um, so then after learning to draw graffiti I decided I would try painting it so we'd have to find like places to paint so you know you go find abandoned places or go under bridges you know next to the train tracks where nobody goes you know so yeah and that just kind of sparked the interest into doing larger scale things this picture is considered graffiti and this one street art could you explain the difference between the two to me graffiti is letters you know when you paint your name in places street art is more you know you see characters or faces or things like that but it all stemmed from graffiti. Could you tell us how you grew into painting murals from your graffiti beginnings? I started trying to do like characters and portraits and things like that. Uh, then around 2013 I think uh, a friend of mine reached out that I had gone to high school with and his brother opened a, a gym and he wanted me to come and paint in his gym uh, doing some Avengers characters. So that was like one of my first commissions to do a mural. Uh, and after that, I mean, it just kind of progressed from word of mouth, just started, you know, you just build your portfolio. And when I wasn't painting graffiti, I was painting murals. And then, so I would just paint, paint, like paint for a job, paint for a hobby, and just produce a ton of work in a small amount of time. So how do you define your work? So I mean I, I do different types of work. I mean graffiti is when I paint letters, paint my name in uh, graffiti style. I also do street art, you know, if I'm painting people or characters. Um, and then murals, 
I would say are commissioned pieces or permission pieces. Street art and graffiti are without permission. As you stated earlier, graffiti is illegal. As such, and you don't have to answer this question, but have you ever been arrested for tagging a wall or a sign? When I was 18, I got arrested for graffiti. Um, I was with a girl trying to, who's not my wife, actually, so I guess it did impress her, but. Uh, so I was catching a tag, as we call it, on a stop sign, and she was like, a car's coming. So I don't care. It's just, you know, I'm just writing my name on a stop sign. Nobody cares. It was a cop. So they hop out, uh, put me in handcuffs, call the, their sergeant. There's about four cops around. They don't know what to do with me. Sergeant says, book them. So, you know, they throw me in the cop car, take all my spray paint, my markers, take me to jail in Williamson County. Uh, and then, so I get one phone call and I couldn't remember my girlfriend's phone number. So I had to call my dad who, I'm 18 at the time, so he was not very happy, and he refused to come and pick me up that night. So I had to get booked and sleep in jail. Um, so he decided to come the next morning. He waited it out. It was about 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon before he came and bailed me out. Uh, and I ended up getting community service, paying some fines, paying a lawyer, you know, $800. Very costly just for writing on a stop sign, which can be replaced for $100, so be careful. A word to the wise. In the murals you paint, do you express political or social thought as many others do? Uh, I typically do not address social ideas. Uh, I don't get too political. I don't want to ride the fence, but I also it's just, when I'm passionate about something, you know, I'll do art for that, but it's usually not political or social. One of your notable murals in downtown Nashville was done for the Tennessee Titans, entitled Tennessee Tough. Could you tell us about your work on that mural? In 2020, I was commissioned by the Titans to create this uh, 3,000 square foot mural uh, titled Tennessee Tough. Um, and they had just hired a new art director, Surf Melendez from Miami, and he was very passionate, and he is very passionate about art and the artists keeping true to their style. Because originally I had done a bunch of designs that were a lot more uh, graphic and illustrative. They didn't want it to look too much like a billboard. You know, he, he wanted me to really tap into myself and who I was an art, as an artist. And how long did it take to complete? Yeah, it took, uh, I think I spent about 21 days. Um, during that time, my son was in the hospital, so, and it was during COVID, so my wife and I, we couldn't both be at the hospital with him at the same time, so we were taking shifts, so I was kind of bouncing back and forth between working on that and being in the hospital, so it kind of drug out a little longer. Um, but yeah, it was about 21 days. And how do you transfer your design to a large-scale wall of this size? There's several different ways to transfer an image when doing them large-scale. Um, one of the easier ones is a projector. A uh, mm -hmm. projector works good, you know, when it's a certain size, when it's dark. You know, you have so many factors you have to rely on to project. Um, so sometimes I'll use that method. For the Titans method, I use what we call a doodle grid or a squiggle grid. So this is kind of a newer method that muralist street artists have come up with where you make a bunch of random marks on the wall. Um, then you step back, you take a picture of the whole wall, you take your design in an app and you overlay it, you turn the opacity down and then you can see your random markings on the wall through your design. So you can see both of them and you have these unique points of reference to sketch out your design utilizing that grid that's behind it. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I did for that. Tell us about your mural on 12th Avenue South. Um, in 12th South, I was commissioned by um, Revive, which is a water conservation project uh, in Nashville. So they're trying to protect our, our waterways because with all of the development and things like that, we don't, the water's 
it's not sustainable. Uh, so with that mural, I kind of wanted to to sh to show how deforestation is uh, affecting like wildlife and also the waterways. Um, so kind of in that mural, the trees are being chopped down or replaced with cranes in the distance the closer you get to the city. Before we wrap this up, Moby, I want to say thanks for visiting with us. But first, why don't you tell folks how they can get in touch with you? Uh, thanks for talking with me. If, if you want to get in touch with me, you can reach me at my website, www.mobywashere.com. Follow me on Instagram at Moby, M-O-B-E, one O-N-E-R. And as we move to our next Nashville graffiti artist, enjoy a few more of Moby's murals. Today, I hopped on the Graffiti Express in East Nashville and rode over to North Nashville. Here, I find myself visiting with graffiti artist Michael Old School Mucker. Good afternoon, Old School. I'm so happy to be here with you. Why don't we go into your studio where you can introduce yourself and then tell us something about your art. Okay, Old School, tell us about yourself. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Michael Mucker. I'm um, also known as Old School, um, graffiti artist, mural artist, uh, now doing tattoos. I realized my interest in art when I was maybe around seven years old. Uh, there was uh, a situation where I was sitting next to my grandfather and there was a reflection in the lenses of his glasses that really caught my eye. And so I sat next to him and I tried to draw it. Um, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was something that sparked my interest. Uh, around the mid 80s, I got into doing graffiti art. Uh, graffiti art was just one of those fun and liberal, uh, liberating things that I was able to do on larger scales because uh, what I, paper was just too small. And then uh, that led into airbrushing, which led into um, a various amount of different things. Could you tell us about your idea behind the mural on this building and how the idea came about? One of the fun things that, um, I guess, you know, working with Alicia, Bo, who is a really good friend of mine, one of the fun things, once we moved into our present tattoo location space, is we wanted to do a mural on the side of the building. I think the cool thing, another cool thing about working with her is that our work isn't necessarily similar, but it balances off of each other. So when she drew her piece, I initially came up with this. So this was my initial drawing for the design for the wall outside. Now, as, um, as much as I wanted to do this entire piece, uh, there was no way possible scale-wise that I would be able to do all this and make him look as, as balanced as her side was. So we cut him at the waist. And where did the idea for the mural come from? Uh, the person that I based my subject off of was Mansa Musa. Mansa Musa was king of Mali uh, in the, I think this would be the 12 or 1300s. But he um, had so much wealth, he would still today be the richest man in the world. In your murals, old school, are there political or social statements? That's a, that's a really good, a lot of times I have to say, that um, anytime an artist is doing anything in the public, he is making a statement, whether it's a political statement, whether it's a social statement, or he's making some sort of statement. Because as an artist, all you want to do is, is express the times that you're living in in a, in, a visual, in a visual context where people can actually have a conversation about it. And a lot of times, some people are just afraid of that conversation. And what are your thoughts on the legality of street art? You know, we were just uh, having a conversation about um, the amount of murals in the Nashville area or the amount of graffiti in the Nashville area. Uh, there's what I like to break down is two different types of, of work that's, that people see a lot of. A lot of people see a lot of permission work. And then those that really do a lot of digging see a lot of the just the street art. 
You know, now the big difference between the two, the permission piece, of course, um, the artist took time and drew it out um, and then went to uh, the building owner or went to whoever was occupying the building and asked if they were able to put this artwork on the building, which is um, not always frowned upon or it's not always a given. You know, and then you have those guys who uh, immediately just, uh, just for the feeling of it all, they just go out and do stuff. Um, the big difference in that is I don't get in trouble for the permission wall, but I get in all kind of trouble for the stuff on the street, which is the more liberating stuff, which is the stuff that is done based off of the gut uh, from a lot of artists just because of frustration. Thanks for your openness, old school. Now, I have a photo of you standing in front of a community-based project you were involved with. Could you tell us a little about this project? In 2010, uh, I was working with a guy named Mike Cavanaugh. Mike Cavanaugh had an organization called Pastel, which, if I'm not mistaken, Pastel stood for Promoting Artistic Solutions Through Logic. I think that was the, the acronym for Pastel. Um, he was an art therapist and he was working out of one of the alternative schools and it invited me out to come and work with some of the students uh, at the school. Uh, we hit it off. You know, it was kind of weird because, you know, I, I never thought of uh, having a conversation about art with an art therapist. The project was in 2010 and it was a neighborhood that had these three flood walls that had a lot of just bad graffiti on it. They didn't like it. So our job was to beautify this corner for these kids to stand on the corner in the morning or to get off of the bus and have something nice to look at. Um, our idea was based off of uh, Dr. Seuss. I uh, forgot which, well, it wasn't one book. I think it was a combination of four different books that we based this off of. And I think the coolest thing along with this project was uh, the, the community involvement. It was really, really cool. The mayor came out, you know, gave us, you know, gave a speech about, you know, community involvement, you know, the artists coming into the neighborhood and helping to beautify the neighborhood for the kids. Uh, it was great. That sounded like a great project. Well, I'm about to run out of time. So let's wrap this up with you telling folks how they can contact you. All right, for, for all of those out there that's wanting to reach out to me, uh, get in contact with me about any art projects, commission work, tattoos, uh, anything like that, you can reach me through the tattoo shop. That would be onedropping.com. Uh, you can also reach me through my Instagram accounts. I have, that would be works of Mike underscore ink for tattooing and works of Mike underscore art for my personal art. But yes, um, I'm, as you can tell, uh, I love to joke. I love to laugh. Uh, I love to have fun. I love to create. You know, this is part of what. Thanks so much, old school. I'll catch you again somewhere down the line. Oh. I'm on the Graffiti Express again, headed back to Shelby Park in East Nashville. Chris Zydek is known for his large-scale geometric pattern mural designs. Good morning, Chris. Why don't you start by telling us a bit about your particular path as an artist. I don't really consider myself to be street art or graffiti. I tried to do graffiti for a couple of years in my early 20s and I wasn't very good at it. So I went more the direction of legal public murals. So I would consider myself more a muralist than any of that. Street art usually, branched, it branched off from graffiti as people who wheat pasted posters and painted characters and put up stickers. Graffiti is more just like the straight up lettering and hitting trains and freights and buildings and stuff. And I got a lot of friends that are in that scene and they're very, very serious about about that scene. And I, that's that's not me. I don't claim the graffiti because uh, that's a whole different world out there doing that. I just, I'm a muralist, fine artist. And you've recently gone back to school. So I'm currently enrolled in uh, MFA program in North Carolina, Master of Fine Arts. It's a three-year master's program. Uh, concentrations in painting, 
I decided to go back because I felt kind of stuck with what I was doing at the time. All my geometric stuff wasn't really fulfilling what I really want to do. I want to do more kind of narrative work. So I decided to go back to school and get some professional help with moving forward with my art style. And when it's all said and done, I can also teach college if that's an avenue I want to take. So I've mostly painted geometry for most of my career as an artist. I studied sacred geometry from like 2008 to 2012, something like that. And sacred geometry is like the oldest form of geometry in the world is using a straight edge uh, compass and a pencil no measuring you only measure by the shapes you make and then you build off that and build and build and build and then you have a, a really complex array of geometry that you then cut away from it to make a simple shape the skeleton is very very complex and there's a lot of meaning and iconography and uh, mysticism in that world the stuff that I did later there was no like hidden meaning in anything like I did before it's more of just pure clean abstraction what is the largest mural you've designed and painted so a few years back I painted my largest mural to date uh, in Midtown or yeah Midtown in Nashville on a parking deck and it's like 40 by 120 feet, something like that. It's, it's big and it's made of circles and triangles kind of interconnecting and, and lapping over each other. And for that project, I've been wanting to buy an iPad for a long time to get this out uh, program called Procreate that I can draw in, like illustrate in. So I took my iPad to the, to the wall. I took a photo of the wall with my iPad and sat down on the street and started drawing my design right there. And how do you transfer your design to a large scale wall? To transfer that design to the wall was all math. You found like one point you could work from that you could recognize on the photo to the wall. And that was your first point. And then doing the triangles, I measured the angles of the triangles. So I didn't like project. Some of my friends use a squiggle grid well, they'll squiggle designs all over it and they'll take a photo of that and they'll take the transparency or opacity down on their piece and then they can have points of reference. Like it's like a, a regular grid, but more, more specific with all the little designs on it. I'm on geometry is just like math <laughs> and fi finding angles and, and measuring things. I have really long measuring tape and I, I really enjoy that process of it. I like not just painting something, but like really using my brain and figuring out this like really large scale math to small scale math and how to scale that. It's a, it's a challenge. I like puzzles. Before we wrap this up, Chris, why don't you give your contact information as we look at a few more of your designs and murals. If you want to see more of my work or contact me, my website is chriszidek.com on Instagram. It's a sidecahedron. <laughs> that's a mouthful. It's what I, I write on my murals. It's C-I-D-E-K-A H-E-D-R-O-N. Thanks so much, Chris, for sharing your ideas and geometric mural designs. As we close, and as the music plays, I'll show a few more of your geometric murals. This is Rusty Somerville for Columbia State Community College and The Art of the Streets saying thanks for watching and I'll catch you at the railroad crossing as the Graffiti Express passes by.